and action. Before we get started, I want to tell everybody that tuned into the premiere and everybody that checked in afterwards, thank you. I really appreciate y'all coming to check out the From Nothing vlog. Run it. The 23. If you could ask me one question about music or life, what would it be? Music matters. We need part two. Did you make the beats or did someone else? What songs did you record in that studio and what songs did you record in your living room? Why did you do it that way? And what made you pick those artists for the features of your first album? On my first album, From Nothing, I produced the whole album. All the beats were my ideas. I had originally started making the beats in 2013 on Logic for Mac when I planned to put out my first all original album of music written and produced by me. That year, or 2014 the latest. So I bought a 61 key M audio keyboard to create with. But several months later during the early morning, my apartment along with 20 other apartments got their jewelry, TVs and computers stolen. All while we were at work. Just my luck. I was pissed off coming home from work. Ready to relax and create. Wanted to see my keyboard but no computer. But I took it as my bad karma for doing something similar in my younger days. Karma's a bitch. Found out later it was an inside job by a group of maintenance men that worked at several apartment complexes. Something straight out of a movie, huh? I had to start all over so I bought a MacBook Pro laptop weeks after my Big Mac got stolen. And I took it with me to work every day just in case to avoid losing another computer. And in late 2013 that's when I moved into the townhome. So me and my bro JP, we went to Guitar Center and bought monitors, mic interface, mic, and a mini keyboard to take production more serious. At that time I worked in the oil field doing instrumentation and on my hour long lunch break since I had a laptop now and a mini keyboard, I would eat quick as possible and use the rest of my time to make rough drafts of beats in my car, as many as I could. Then when I got home, I would arrange them and get them to my liking. And I would send them to my email and the next day would mentally write lyrics in my head as I listened to the beats while working. And on my 15 minute breaks, I would type my memorized rhymes in my phone so I wouldn't forget and I would repeat that process daily. I guess you could say I mastered the art of multitasking. <laughs> On Friday nights, I would record in my living room whatever songs I came up with during the week at work. My girl and my daughter would go to our room so I could work on music, and I would record, and I would mix them the best I could, but was really new at mixing vocals, so it wasn't too good. I remember not being able to be loud with my music either, because my neighbor was nosy as hell. The walls were paper thin so she would bang on the wall during recording and even reported us over noise complaints to the owner several times. But that wasn't enough to stop me. I recorded like that for months and after having a good amount of songs recorded, I picked out three songs to go record at a studio to put out a demo CD to take to South by Southwest that year. My cousin Big Tiny drove me to the studio in his Dodge Charger and the first two songs recorded were Stay Smoking and Sound Sweet. Two weeks later we went back and recorded Get Out My Way featuring Playboy and Lil Tex of SOT Records. My cousin Tiny had some green that was so good, it had us all in outer space for both sessions. That studio was smoked out. I put them on a song cause we were in a group together called SOT Records. I wanted a feature from them because they showed me love by wanting to put an artist from Pasadena on their Houston based record label. I was fresh out of jail, on bail, and fighting the case when I became a member. But that's another story for another time. Afterwards, we performed that song on the last SOT live performance we had before the group disbanded. My demo CD was never taken to South by Southwest because the CD pressing company didn't come through. They said they got backed up with pressing for South by Southwest, even though I was told my 100 CDs would be ready in time. But I'm glad they weren't ready because Austin streets were literally filled with broken CDs on the ground. I would have beat somebody down if I seen my hard work broken into pieces like that. Straight up. Late 2014, I moved into my house and I made a playlist of my favorite recorded songs from my album in the making after recording over 60 songs that year before. One day, an artist named Miss J Dynasty reached out to me through social media and she said she sings and was wanting to work with serious artists if I was down to work to send her something. 
I asked for her price, and she said she wouldn't charge as long as I'm serious and do something with her feature. So I immediately sent her a song called Sometimes to see how serious she was. She sent me the song back the next day with her singing the chorus. I was blown away, because when I sent it, it had one verse and me on the hook just to show the idea. But she built off the idea and made it so much better. I ended up sending her two more songs, So Much To Say and You Never Know. She did the same thing with those songs as well. I showed my playlist to my boy B Music that Friday when he came over to chill. And I said, I want you on this album. I got the song with an open verse and this dope singer on it, look, check it out. And I play sometimes. I remember him saying, hell yeah, that song is badass. I'll come up with something for it. I put it on CD for him so he could write at home. And he came back to record his part that following Friday. And then did background vocals on my song, For the Stars, right after recording this part. He was the first person, other than me, to record in my music room. It wasn't even fixed yet. It didn't look nothing like it does right now. After I had those songs done, I didn't want to waste any more time. So I picked 14 of my favorite songs that I felt were a good playlist and had sent 11 to Blaine for mixing and mastering so the songs could sound best as possible. He worked on them in Lee College in Baytown from what I remember. I worked with him before in 2011 when I recorded at a home studio that he was working out of on a song that I produced but never released. That's how I knew of him as a recording engineer. The other three songs had been mixed and mastered during the studio session with K-Flip, so they were good to go. I finally had the music ready to be sent in to CD Baby for CD pressing and digital distribution. While my album was being processed, I linked up with Ryan, aka Lil Ice, Hood Certified, to have my first set of t-shirts made that said, the world is yours. That idea was from Scarface, but also because I had that audio of Scarface and Manolo talking at the beginning of my song, Shine Forever. So it was the words that pushed me to go out and make something of myself with my music. He designed and pressed 20 of them up for me. I wanted merch to go with this album. I paid him in full up front and he had my shirts ready within days. So I sold them both together once the CDs came in. That was the beginning of understanding how important it was to have merch for your fans. And ever since then, I've always provided merch with my music. The 23 I'm going to end this like this. I believed in myself when no one believed in me. And at one point, a lot of people tried to discourage me and a lot of people said I wouldn't do shit. But I just know I believed in myself and I took that chance. And my music's out there. And it's going to continue to get out there. Because I'm going to keep on going and I'm going to keep on dropping music. And I'm going to keep making my own way like I've been doing since day one. Remember to believe in yourself and take a chance on yourself because no one's going to take notice until you take notice in yourself. I believe in you. The 23...